Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage. We're working on Olive, and I'm gonna give an update on some of the decisions I'm making about interior layout, and how we're getting on, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, but just thought I'd start with saying that even amongst all the, the madness of the coronavirus and the tragedy around that, uh, even, even amongst that sad day this morning, as we learned of the passing of Sir Sterling Moss. And if you're not familiar with him, he was one of Britain's greatest racing icons. Possibly the best racing driver never to win the Formula One World Championship. And uh, for really decent Britain, really good guy. So, see you, Sir Sterling, and uh, we move on with the video. I'm stuck. <laughs> So the fact that we can actually get in the garage at the moment suggests that things are starting to come back together. Um, my huge pile of wood is now down to odds and ends plus the moisture resistant MDF which is going to be used to make the cupboards cabinetry in the van. Go quick look up front. So front carpets aren't yet in but we got the kickboards in door cards actually looking quite quite smart um, we do have a front carpet set I've had to install the bits that go under the seats these seats are getting retrimmed but um, everything bolts through the seat belts seat mounts etc etc so they've had to go in a few extra studs and attachments uh, and sprayed the areas around the seats black because we've got black carpets and just basically to make them disappear a little bit the bulkheads looking very good all fully installed seat belt mount reinstated this was always here um, that will be for a lap strap for the drop down dicky seat which will use these two captive bolts to hold its mechanism to this rather thick uh, panel that's then bolted to the steel bulkhead in the vehicle little bulkhead over there the fridge which is now working um, i have started to smarten up we've put a vinyl front on it see a couple of air bubbles i'm gonna have to do some more work on that um, and sprayed the black plastic panel at the top. Still going to work out how to replace, repair the little grill at the bottom. The sides are pretty much irrelevant because you, you're going to uh, never see those again once it's installed. We've got a back panel on underneath the window and a lot of vinyl work's been done to surround the Louvre window. Louvre little wrinkle again to sort out in the C pillar but nothing major um, the padded panels back in and lit on that side this side still yet to do properly um, that panel is obviously temporarily fitted at the moment you can see it's not quite installed but starting to come into place most of this is going to be covered up there's probably about an inch at the top of vinyl that will be on show um, but you can see because I've come straight down with the vinyl at the back 
but um, the cupboards will probably finish where the white is. The area that's uncovered in the back, or will be when that's all properly pushed back, is a bulge where the fuel filler comes in from the outside. Still got nothing on the ceiling up there. The carpet's just because it hurts your knees, because <laughs> it's very wrinkly in the back. All the rear seat belts are reinstalled, um, both through the bodywork of the vehicle, big metal plates on the underside, which is an absolute pain in the bum, and uh, a sheet of ply as well, just to make sure that they're really secure and solid. Um, big effort went into re-trimming the door, as in the sliding door. Um, I've got it as good as I can get it. There's a fiberglass panel involved that's got that recess and around the window. It isn't perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. So quite pleased with that. Uh, this has got to be trimmed off. I'm just leaving it as long as I can so I decide what to do with it properly. Uh, that's all covered in. And those panels at the back were the devil's own game to come up with the template for that. The original had three or four pieces. I wanted as few as possible, so that, that's took quite a lot of uh, time and effort. So, um, the, the, the sort of major decision point that I've come to, um, me and Joe really, is how are we gonna lay out the kitchen and therefore lay out the bed? There's a spare wheel well, which is my toolbox at the moment, on that side of the van. And originally there was just one small unit here in front of that. And the bed was the rest of the full width right up to that side. Um, it's a, it's a awkward bitty layout. There was say so this, this unit here that had the sink and a fridge in it. There was a unit here that was a seat that had a cooker in the base of it and we didn't want that, we wanted a permanently installed um, hob. So the kitchen is going along this side and there is a line on the floor. Uh, which one is it? There we go. That line closest to me, which is probably where the kitchen will come to, which means the bed's pushed over to the right. If we keep the spare wheel where it is in the little well, then your sleeping arrangement are going to be like dog-legged kinked around the back of the kitchen unit and around the spare wheel as well. So what we decided to do is we're going to put a, a lid on the spare wheel cover um, so you can store tools and bits and pieces in there and the spare wheel is going to be surface mounted hence the untrimmed area just in front of the tailgate and the cupboards will go up to it thus giving you sort of a, an area along here with the cupboards, uh, the spare wheel on the side, and again, one flat strip for a bed with the rock and roll mechanism. So that's what we decided to go with. So if I just grab the spare wheel, pop her in, that will basically sit there strap back against the side of the van. As you can see, it actually tucks away reasonably well. From the outside, you lose just a quarter, a quarter, a segment of the window, that biggie. And we've got all that space open then to install the bed. I've started to install the new rubber seal for the tailgate, which was leaking previously. I got this brand new seal from Just Campers. Uh, it's nice and squidgy, so this has got no glue on it whatsoever at the moment. It's just pushed into the groove and it's sitting nicely. But you have to do a lot of finessing to get it to sit just right. The corners do need gluing down. Um, and I'm leaving that as long as possible because I keep playing with it and different areas need <laughs> some more work 
in terms of positioning them in the slot and getting the trim in place. But so, work in progress, but it should seal quite nicely and I'm quite happy with the seal that they've uh, sold me. Delivered in the post recently. One is second hand fridge exhaust outlet, which obviously needs dressing up uh, with the associated bits and pieces, pipe work and flanges and wherever. And because we could put the fridge there, this is gonna have to go here underneath the seam on the side. This hole had the electrical outlet in it, or inlet, I don't know, um, where you hook up to your mains. But I don't know if it was French connection or not, but um, certainly not standard UK. Let's have a look. Somebody will tell me. So this is the outlet. And we have this two pin arrangement, which I'm unfamiliar with. <clears throat> so we've got this one to install, which has the correct, at least for the UK, three pin outlet arrangement inside and a flappy downy cover but it's slightly larger so I'm gonna to have to enlarge the hole in the side quite considerably to fit that but hey that's gonna make it safe from an electrical point of view so small price to pay unfortunately this UK spec um, inlet like in most things uk domestic electrical is bigger than this i guess in french but i don't know could be german um inlet so the hole in the side of the vehicle isn't big enough for this so what we're going to do is fortunately this came with a little uh, rubber gasket that gasket is going to be the template to get the hole in the right place and we're gonna move it up fractionally how far let's have a look so what we're gonna do is put it there the reason I'm elevating it slightly is there's a curve in the body panel and by Doing that, I get it on a slightly flatter section of body, which is good. And I'm going that way because there's a bit of uh, a strengthening rib on the inside where I want to miss rather than cut the strengthening rib. So with that in position, making sure my new holes are going to be in a good place. Mark that line. Because I'm marking inside the template, what I know is I have to cut the lines off. It's also a very snug fit. So I make those disappear and we should be good. Okay, so I've been there, put the hole 
filed it and taken sharp edges off. The close masking means spray a bit of stone chip and just coat the edges. So, here's the two devices. There we go. Put that to one side. Take that off. See if this cable's going to clean up. Not that you'll see it. So, two screws on each terminal, so quite nice. Although well, the screws look a bit eccentric headed. This was about £12, I think, off of eBay. So I wasn't expecting great things, but it looks okay. The trick with these double ones is use the far terminal, far screw, as if it's the only one. Make sure it's mechanically got it, then tighten the other. As you can kid yourself into thinking they're both tight and neither of them are very. Okay, so, there we are. So it works, and if you don't know, that is a UK maybe thing, I'm not sure. You pull that down and it lifts the blue flap um, which helps hook the whole thing into place um, and therefore can't pull it out of the van. So that's to release the cable. There we go, and that can't be removed unless you press this button, which picks the lid back up. Ah, good. 